Now in this lesson we look at drawing some tree diagrams to help us solve our probability questions. Examples. A coin is tossed three times. In part A we need to draw a tree diagram to illustrate the different results possible. Then in part B, find the probability of getting three heads. And finally in part C, to find the probability of getting at least two tails. Well part A firstly, we draw a tree diagram. So, if a coin is tossed three times, we'll consider the first, the second, and the third throws. Now, starting at a point, okay, any good tree, if you like, started just from a seed. The first, okay, we're going to write, as best we can, in a straight line, the first possible results. Well, we can either get a head or a tail, okay, it's pretty simple, either a head or a tail. Now, the second throw. Well, let's say our first throw was a head. On the second throw, we could get a head or a tail. If, on the other hand, our first throw was a tail, our second throw could also be a head or a tail. Now, let's move on to our third throw. Well, from here, it doesn't matter what we throw, the next throw can always be a head or a tail. So from each of the points, a head or a tail as the next throw. So finally there, we complete it, a head or a tail. Now the whole purpose of drawing these tree diagrams is to generate a list of different results. So the results are, if we follow the branches here, H, 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 okay, that's three heads. The next one, two heads, then a tail. The next one, a head, tail, then a head. A head and then two tails. Now, jumping down here, a tail, then two heads, tail, head, tail, 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 head, and finally, three tails. So, they are all our different results. There are eight of them, okay? Eight different results there. Now, we can start answering some questions. We need to find the probability of getting three heads. Well, the probability of head, 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 Let's have a look. It only occurs once. Only occurs once out of eight. So the probability is one out of eight. What about the probability of getting at least two tails? Now, at least two tails means two tails or more than two tails. So let's see where it occurs. There it occurs once. It occurs there again. It occurs there again. Okay, all those showing two tails but at least two tails would also include getting three tails. So it happens four times there out of eight. So the fraction, the probability is four over eight. And of course we can simplify that, break it down to one half. Excellent. Our second example now. Three cards labeled four, five, and six are placed in a hat. They are drawn out one at a time and placed next to each other to form a three-digit number. Now again, we need to draw a tree diagram to illustrate the different results possible. Then we're going to find the probability that the number formed is even. And finally, find the probability that the number formed is less than 500. Well, let's start by our tree diagram. So, they are drawn out one at a time. So, first draw, a second draw, and then a third draw. Now the three cards are labelled 4, 5 and 6. So the first possibility, we could get a 4, or we could get a 5, or we could get a 6. Now the second draw, it's a little bit different now. If our first card is a 4, right, let's have a look up there. That 4's been drawn out, so let's block it out. So what's left? Okay, only a 5 and a 6. So the second draw would either be a 5 or a 6. Hmm, what about this one? What say if the first was a 5? Okay, we drew the 5 out first. Okay, up the top there, let's block it out. What is there remaining? Alright, the second draw would have to be either a 4 or a 6. But what if the first card was a 6? Let's block that out. There's only a 4 and 5 remaining. So the second card would have to be a 4 or a 5. Now we're on to our third card drawn. 
Well, in this instance, we've drawn the 4 out, then the 5 out. There's only the 6 left. In this way, we've drawn the 4, then the 6. So the third card would have to be 5. Okay, have a bit of a think about this. There's only working out which cards are left. On this hand, we have a 5, then a 4. Well, what's left? Okay, has to be 6, doesn't it? In this instance, we've drawn a 5, then a 6, so it has to be 4. In our final two situations, this one, a 6 and a 4, the next one has to be 5, or a 6 and a 5, then finish with a 4. Okay, the results now. We have a 4, 5, 6, a 4, 56. Next one, 4, 65. The next number is 5, 46. Then 5, 64. 6, 45. And finally, 6, 54. Terrific. Okay, those results is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different results there. Now we can start answering the probability questions. We need to find the probability that the number formed is even. Well, the P of even, let's see, there are four of them. Okay, four even numbers there out of the possible six. So four chances out of six, and that will break down two over three, two thirds. Find the probability that the number formed is less than 500. So we'll write that down, P of the number being less than 500. This time, the 456 and the 465, certainly they're less than 500. All the others, though, are bigger. So there's only two of them, two out of the six. So we write that, and again, we'll break that fraction down to one third. Terrific. Well, that concludes the lesson. Good luck with your questions.